Hello and welcome to the Property Forum Chat Show with myself, Nicholas Woolwork, investor, developer and owner of PropertyForum.com. On today's show, we'll be answering questions around how to protect yourself when investing in property, more specifically property law and buying off plan. Are you new to investing and unsure which type of legal service you might need? Do you understand the difference between a conveyancer or a solicitor? Are you unsure which type of off-plan investment might work best for you? Well, today's the show for you. If you haven't seen our show before, each episode is based around a different area of property investment. We take questions from our online forum and we post them to our expert panel here in the studio. If you'd like to get involved in a future episode of the show, please log online to propertyforum.com. You can create a username, it's completely free, and you can pose your questions online. If your questions don't make it onto the show, I'm sure one of our expert panelists will answer it online. We also have a forum membership of over 60,000 users, and they'll be able to impart their wisdom if that helps you. We hope you enjoy the show, and we'll see you online soon. We're delighted today to be joined by Eamon Ahmed, a leading property lawyer and CEO of Sterling Ackroyd Legal. We're also joined by Michelle Barringer from Redbrick Wealth, who'll be discussing how to protect yourself when buying off-plan investment property. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Whatever level of experience you have as a property investor, it's inevitable that you will face a legal issue at some point in your property career. Costly delays and common mistakes can be avoided with the correct professionals in your contact book from day one. Eamon Ahmed joins us now to discuss this further. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience and background in the world of property uh, legal? Yes, of course. Um, I am a specialist uh, real estate lawyer. I concentrate on commercial property um, and development, and uh, I focus sort of more on litigation between developers and, and on the real estate side. Okay, fantastic. So a good man to have on board when you need to get rid of a problem tenant or right. a tricky deal to get through, you can help negotiate that through, That's whereas right. some solicitors may not be quite as uh, diverse in there. Yeah, so we focus approach. on uh, the local councils and authorities and also developer versus developer. So yeah, a lot of, thi- a, lot of a, a range of development legal stuff. Yeah. Super. Even with a great legal team on your side, buying off plan is still looked at by some investors as a higher risk investment strategy than those developing already built properties. But in reality, is this actually the case? Michelle Barringer joins us to navigate us through the journey of buying off-plan property. Hello, Michelle. Great to have your expertise here today. How long have you been working on off-plan properties? I've been working with off-plan properties for about the last six years. Okay, superb. And what have you kind of experienced in that time working with them? What are the biggest pitfalls people need to look out for? I think the biggest thing to consider when you're buying off plan is to do a large amount of due diligence. Ideally, use an agent who can provide some of that for you, but also do your own research, find out about your developer, about the background, about what they do, not only about the company, but about the individuals behind that company. Okay, brilliant. Let's dive straight into our questions from the forum. This first question is one I think is a good one for you, Eamon. This is uh, James from Somerset. He says, I'm completely new to property investment. I hear a lot about creating the right team of people around you. Who would you list on your top four essential property experts to build an early relationship with? Um, well, Nick, so I think we need to start with the lawyer, obviously. Right? <laughs> yeah, That's clearly. The first one to start <laughs> yes. with. Yeah. Um, I think, I think um, the question is quite a diverse question because it needs to take into account um, what sort of, a, of an investor you actually are. So some people do residential, some people do commercial, others do mixed use. So, we need to, I think, I think that's a, a quite a big important factor when answering that question. But let's just say, for example, that James is uh, doing his first sort of residential investment. Yep. So we'll start at the bottom there. Um, I'd say, yes, 100%, you need a good lawyer. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a lawyer myself, but it's because there's, you know, he's, it's, a, it's a big risk. He's a first time investor. He's going in there without knowing, you know, everything about, about the property and about the industry. So it's something that he needs to do. He needs to have someone who knows uh, the, the industry inside and out and can give him some really in-depth due diligence on the property that he's buying. Um, I think a broker, uh, 100%. I think, a finance I think broker. A finance broker, yeah. a finance broker yeah. yes. Um, a finance broker can definitely um, sort of tell him his limits on, on borrowing and tell him, you know, what he can borrow, what he shouldn't borrow. And, and really just show him a range of products that he's, that is out there in the market. What's available to him. What's available to him, yeah. yeah. Um, if there's some refurb to be done, or maybe some planning issues, 
Uh, an architect and survey, I think those two should be one category, 100%, uh, just in case they, they want to extend or you know local planning authorities have, have, have issues or, or whatever. Um, and lastly, I would have a good builder. Yeah. You never know what's going to creep up. You need to have a good builder just in case you can uh, call them back, back and call to come and definitely, do Definitely, definitely. I think that's equally important as, as some of the others, and the, the list can go on. I think that's right. One yeah, of the keys yeah. to, to investing in property is having people at different stages of the of the you know the development life cycle, if you like, correct to bring in. Um, so yeah, that's a good answer there. Thank you very much. Um, we've got a question uh, for Michelle now, which is uh, posed on the forum um, by Josh from Wolverhampton. He says, "I've never bought off plan before, and have been considering buying a student apartment through a UK developer." What level, what level of research should I be undertaking? As I mentioned previously, due diligence is really key in buying off plan. Um, and when you're looking at a student development in particular, not only do you need to look at the developer and their background and their history, look at any previous projects they've done, you also need to do your research on the market, the area that they're buying in, look at the town, look at the demand and the current supply. Um, also look at the planning that they've got for that student development. So has it got full residential planning, therefore giving you more options on your resale at the end. So overall, look at the entire project, look at every aspect of it and get some professional advice if you can on what your options are with that site during its use and when you want to sell it on. Yeah, OK, that's a really good tip, actually, looking at the planning as a potential opportunity if it's got, for that example, if it's a student apartment building, but it's got residential planning use as well, you're not tied into using it for one particular investment strategy. You can Absolutely. diversify if the market demands and, and you see a better opportunity elsewhere in the future. Okay. Um, Eamon, Peter from Essex would like to know, we're looking to buy our first investment property. We do not know who to approach first. Do we speak to a solicitor, a mortgage broker, or perhaps agents first? Okay. Um, well, I think... In my, from my personal experience, I think they all need to work sort of in synergy together. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. But um, I think when you're doing an investment or you're buying something, you know, uh, a property, there's a lot of money involved. So I wouldn't say jump in and find the solicitor, you know, to come and do some due diligence because you need to know what your budget is. I think budget, budget, budget. You need to know okay. exactly what you can afford and take into account your monthly outgoings, take into account what rental income because it's an investment. Um, I, think, I think a good broker, Will will go that extra mile and give you you know your the, the background on you first on your financial capabilities first. There's no point shopping if you've not got the money to buy it. Essentially. Correct. Nick. Yeah, I think that's that's uh, that's key. But um, also get your relationships with your solicitors in there early. Make sure that you know you can call them up whenever you want and say, right, I found something. Um, yeah. Can you have a look at it? Can you do some due diligence on it? Yeah. Um, and also, I think I think it's fundamental to have some relationships with um, estate agents as well. Because if you yeah, know what area you're buying in, from and you know your perspective, yeah. correct, and you yeah. know your budget, yeah. you know your solicitor can do the far work for you as and when it needs to be done. But I think some good estate agents to build some strong relationships with, it so so they can tell you, you know, we've got something come on the market quickly. And given the given the fast pace of the market at the moment, I think it's good to get in there as quick as possible and you know make your decisions. I would agree completely, and I think the hidden. The hidden opportunity from Peter's question there is that actually talk to all of them because Correct. the solicitor might know of a good investment property that's come up for sale from another client. Exactly. The mortgage broker might have clients that are selling particular investments at that time. So Correct. Correct. all of those sources could be a yeah. source uh, of a potential deal. Sourcing mm -hmm. agents like Michelle, she'll go out and source a deal for you. So if you don't want to yeah. go out and do all the legwork, it's a huge amount of work finding another site. Oh, yeah. Site. yeah. Um, and, and often I, I, you, you see that agents, lawyers, and brokers, they all sort of semi have to work together to get your deal through the line. To, you know, there might be a contract race, there might be some, you know, the, the vendor might want to get it done as soon as possible. I don't know, but there are certain factors that come in and, yeah. and I think they all work together well. So all in good time, I think, I think you should approach them all in the, at the sort of same yeah, time. Just start networking. Really. Networking, and the, yeah, and the that's forum right. is a great place to do that online. There's lots of property professionals there. Correct. People can go on, make introductions and network yeah. and, and start to build their relationships, their relationships and Correct, their, yeah. their power team, if you like. Yes. So we've now got a question from Samuel from Portugal, uh, which is one uh, for Michelle. I've been looking at buying hotel room investment off plan and wondered whether there'd be any benefits to choosing a specific unit in a specific location. Um, he uses an example of sort of a top floor or a corner unit, for example, so in a particular location in the building. What would you do uh, when helping Samuel choose the right unit for him? 
That would depend on the type of hotel investment that Samuel's looking at. If he's looking at a fractional ownership, you won't always get a choice of unit. The developer releases a small number of units at a time, and then when they're sold, we'll move on to the next unit. If you're looking at buying a whole hotel room, there are often choices in your room. And again, whether you need to be concerned about the location or not does depend on the deal that you're buying on. If you've got a fixed rate return and a fixed exit strategy, the location is less important. However, if you're looking at resale on the open market, then the location is more important. Um, and what you'd want to consider is what your end user is looking for. So if you've got a sea view, obviously that's going to command a premium over something overlooking a car park. So Definitely, think about yeah. what you would like to use from a holiday perspective. Also think about what your your individual hotel is offering and the maximum that you can get from that hotel. So if it's a family hotel, look at a room that has extra beds for children would be more saleable than a room, a single room. It's so a, yeah. looking for what's suitable for your market really. Yeah, okay, and looking for you know, as much flexibility I guess as possible. Yeah. I guess it, it, part of whether the investment from the developer is, like you said, a fixed rate return, yeah. or if it's based on the profits, the usage from that, of the hotel, the usage yeah. of the hotel. In which case, you really do want to help, you know, try and pick the best unit, don't you? Absolutely, so you're, you're yeah. Renting it. Absolutely. So you want to look at the the maximum flexibility. Flexibility. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've got a question for you now, Eamon. This is from Jonathan from Belfast. I'm looking to take on a commercial lease. The landlord is requesting that I take it in my personal name. What's the difference in taking it in a company or in my personal name? Um, well, most landlords, most commercial landlords or institutional landlords would either want um, uh, someone who's going to sign a lease in their personal name or give a personal guarantee for obvious reasons. So you, some risk taken down. Exactly. It's going to reduce risk for them. Uh, it's good on their books. And uh, if they've got financiers, they like that sort of stuff. So having a guarantor as a Correct. For, for a tenant, basically. That's exactly right, thing. yeah. Um, I'd, I'd say for Jonathan, I mean, I would strongly recommend um, taking out in a limited company or some sort of company structure. Yeah. That sort of puts up uh, some barriers for him. It's limited liability for him. It's less risk for him. And should should um, something go wrong or should the market not go as, as, um, as expected, then it would be a matter of just throwing the towel in and saying, look, you know, you, d you don't expose yourself in, in, in a way, sort of thing. Yeah, and that's a negotiation point, really, is it? When, that when is. Negoti negotiating lease, you're able to help with that and advise certain clients yes, yeah. had they seen that opportunity to negotiate it in a limited company, for example. Yeah, I mean, Nick, I would strongly, strongly recommend that uh, if you're taking a commercial lease out, you discuss it with your solicitors, with your lawyers, and let them take the lead on the negotiation, because it's not the same as residential property. Um, there's loads of dilapidation issues and there's loads of uh, deposit issues and stuff. So th there's so many ways that one can negotiate or b b through their lawyer, yeah. and I would strongly recommend that. So don't offer too early, nope. get your lawyer in That's before right. you even offer. Yeah, let, let the landlord's solicitors and your solicitors sort of thrash a deal out, and I'm sure that, that, that your solicitors will be sort of engaging with you throughout the process. Yep. Okay. I think it's also a point to consider um, when you're buying an off-plan investment is whether it's through a sole trader or through a limited company because you're protected differently depending on how you're buying. So it's, a, it's a worth exploring on that side of things as well. Yeah, that's a good point. It's not just commercial leases, it's all types of, all types yeah. of property investment. Yeah. Any sort of commercial transaction, I think, is yeah. well worth you know, your due diligence. It's well worth getting a solicitor on. I mean, it's a fraction of the cost of your investment, yeah, um, and it and it it's well worth it. Lovely. Okay. Well, that's all we've got time for for the moment. Um, after the break, we'll be back discussing um, whether it's possible to buy an off-plan property with a mortgage, or whether it's better to buy with cash. <laughs> 